I think biophilic design is focusing on elements of nature um, that you can bring into your design process. So it's not about biomimicry, you're not trying to replicate nature or um, replace nature, but you're trying to be influenced by it and, and draw it into your design and also use your design to kind of draw people's connection better to nature. I'm Clementine Fletcher-Smith. I work at Spears Major Light Architecture. We are designers who work with light. We work on a very diverse range of project types. So we work on public realm, on heritage, on new build, on hospitality, on airports, infrastructure, everything. And it's that diversity of project type that um, I suppose keeps, keeps the work really interesting and enables us to bring ideas from one project type to another. We focus on innovation and creativity and look for opportunities to embed light in projects. So the term light architecture is about um, how, how light becomes part of the architecture of the project. It isn't something that kind of gets added on later. I think it's always been important in our work just by um, the fact that we're, we're influenced by natural light. You know, natural light is the start and all lighting designers will say that, you know, if you want to learn anything about, about lighting design, look to nature first. You see everything, you see sparkle, reflection, shadow, um, contrast, texture, everything happens in nature already. So it's important to bring that into our design so that we don't create static spaces. You don't want to design lighting for a, a, a place and make it, um, I guess feel inanimate or you know you want to bring life to it and bring nature to it so this this sort of sense of change well we started having conversations um a while ago and i've seen some of the conversations you were having with dr shelley james and um, we we have done our own internal research as a studio looking at the psychological impact of light, um, as well as the physiological impact of light. There are lots of really heavy textbooks and papers about the scientific side of light that perhaps wouldn't appeal to everybody. Um, so it was nice to be able to kind of draw those in and almost provide the, the wider overview. So you've got these kind of slices of of quite scientific bits of information, but then also how it applies to the relevance of the design world. So it was quite unusual to get it all put together in a single place rather than have, you know, one article here or one paper there or um, a, a, a sort of very scientific chapter in a, in a lighting book. You know, there's lots about natural light and architecture carving space, but not about how you bring artificial light into a space and how you can balance with natural light or make people feel or change people's behavior. One thing that's quite interesting to talk about is the, the, the concept of human-centric lighting or circadian lighting, which comes up all the time. And I think we often have to kind of talk to clients or, or design teams that we're working with about the fact that the light that you're exposed to in a building in the daytime is not going to replace the light that you're exposed to outside and we can never compete with that. Um, so actually it's more about this sense of feeling comfortable and like feeling appropriate and it's that um, sort of psychological comfort you get from from a quality of light being similar to, to nature so I think that's something that people sometimes misunderstand they think that you can actually have a really significant impact on your circadian rhythm from the daytime light that you're exposed to inside whereas actually it's that the light you're exposed to outside that has a huge impact you know much more so than than what we can do as designers <laughs>